The reading is from John chapter 20, verses 1 to 18, which you can find on page 1089 in your Bibles. (coughs) John 20, beginning at verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they've put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scriptures that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head, the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. At this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, If you've carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I'm ascending to my Father and your Father to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. Thank you, Philip. Well, welcome. My name is Rachel Hamilton, and I'm part of the team here at Sunnyside. So if you don't know me, then a very well welcome to you this morning. Let me pray before I begin. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, for this day, Easter, for sending your Son, that he is risen. We ask that you speak to us this morning so that we will know more about you. In Jesus' name, amen. So I have ten cream eggs. So, yeah, you, maybe Robin, if you, you can have one, but I've got 10 cream eggs at the end of the service. I've got one word that I'm going to say in this talk that I want you to count how many times I say it, if you want a cream egg, that is. So the word is news. <coughs> so if you can come up and tell me at the end of this service, first come, first serve, basically, um, how many times I've said this word news... I've now said that twice, so I've just got to remember how many times I say it. I'm not going to say it again. Um, then you will get a cream egg if you really like cream eggs. So I love Park Run. I don't know if any of you have heard of Park Run. Um, some people who know me are fed up of hearing me say Park Run and when I do that. But Park Run is basically this 5K run that you get on a Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, bright and early, and it is all over the country and all over the world. And it is free 
and they tell you at the beginning, it is not a race. I really find this hard to stick to because I'm quite competitive and I love to race. So it is meant to be a fun 5K run that's free on a Saturday morning, just in case you're interested. There is one in Wendover that I did yesterday morning, which is pretty, a pretty hilly one, but a beautiful one. And there is one in Gaybridge. They're the local ones. But I would say I'm a free ambassador for Park Run. I would share with people the great news of this Park Run that was a great initiative. I'd tell my family, my friends, my work colleagues, even if they hated running and didn't want to hear about it, I would still tell them. And during lockdown, Park Run was cancelled. And it only came back after I think the third, fourth, maybe the fifth lockdown was over. It was back, the wait was over. We got the email saying the park run is allowed to happen. Such great news, I was very excited. I wonder what your news that you were excited to hear about at the end of the lockdowns. In our reading this morning from John's Gospel, we hear in this story some great news. But before the news, we begin with the race between John and Peter. And there is a pretty competitive side that comes out in John in this story, who he calls himself the disciple whom Jesus loved. And I feel it makes him pretty relatable and real. So you've got Peter and you've got John, and they get this news from Mary Magdalene, who's a good friend of Jesus, that Jesus' body has been moved or has been taken from the tomb. It was no longer there. And John tells us that him and Peter were both running to the tomb. But the other disciple whom Jesus loved, John, outran Peter and reached the tomb first. John felt that it was really important that he needed to put this bit of information in, that basically he won the race to the tomb, he outran Peter. But when they got there, the tomb was empty. Peter checked first. Peter had lost the race. He hadn't got there first, but he wasn't holding back. He went straight into the tomb to check, to make sure. But like Mary Magdalene had told them, Jesus' body wasn't there. Maybe this was there to their surprise. Maybe they didn't quite believe Mary when she told them, but his body had gone. Finally, the other disciple, John, who tells us again that he reached the tomb first, just in case we'd forgotten. He also went inside and he saw and he believed. Bless Mary, she must have been thinking, why are you so shocked? I already told you that he wasn't there. Typical. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if this sucked the life out of the disciples. Not only had they lost their teacher and their Lord, he just died. Now they lost his body. Not the news that they were wanting. Where had it gone? What can they do about it? Not much. They decided that maybe this was a lost cause and they make their way home. But the story doesn't end there. Phew. For some reason, Mary Magdalene decides to stay outside the tomb. Maybe she thinks that she will find someone who will tell her something about where Jesus' body had gone. Mary wasn't giving up. And in her determination, she not only hears the best news ever, but she sees it for herself. We have arrived at Easter Sunday, the day that we celebrate because the story didn't end <coughs> there. While Mary is crying in the garden, Jesus appears, and she thinks he's the gardener. But she only recognises it's him when he calls her by her name, Mary. Jesus tells Mary to go and tell the people about this news. So Mary went straight to tell the disciples, I have seen the Lord, she tells them. Mary has seen the risen Jesus. He is alive. His body wasn't moved or taken, but had risen. This is the best news ever. But why? The resurrection, the fact that Jesus didn't stay in the tomb, that he rose again and defeated death for us. This news changes everything. Just before Jesus died, he shouted from the cross, It is 
finished. What was finished? Jesus was saying that everything you need to come back home to God, everything you need to be free and happy in God, and everything you need to live with him forever, he is saying he has done it all. It wasn't a cry of defeat. It was a shout of victory. The great work of rescuing us was finished. There is nothing that we can do to make God love us more, and there is nothing that we can do to make him love us less. The best news is that it is finished, and he did that for us. He went to the cross, and he died, and then he rose again for us, for me, for you, so that we can have life and life in all its fullness. We can have eternal life, a life connected with God forever. Nothing can separate us from him. He is always with us, and it's all because of Jesus. Jesus is the best news ever. And this good news can be your good news. Jesus is the good news that was brought to give joy to all people. There is no criteria to come to him. He wants to be your good news today. All you need to do is say yes. <coughs> this, this message of great news is always relevant for us. It was relevant in the first century Galilee. It was relevant during the pandemic. And it is relevant today. So this Easter, let's not let this news, this best news ever, get old and stale, like the hot cross buns will get old and stale. Let's get excited this Easter that Jesus has risen, that he is alive and that he changes everything. In amongst all the chocolate, the hot cross buns and the lovely roast dinners that you may be having later, let us remember the reason that we celebrate today. The reason that is Jesus is risen and he is the best news ever. So let's be like Mary, sharing with people this great news. Amen. Amen.